Hey guys, good morning. It is Tuesday morning, and this is not going to be a rah rah super happy speech. <laughs> this is going to be a kick in the pants, tell it like it is, piss a hell of a lot of people off talk this morning. So listen up. The three major mistakes I see with folks applying any program or doing any kind of business or just the reason that they fail. One, they candy coat. Two, this is very similar to candy coat, they think that being nice is going to pay off when dealing with claimants and with individuals. They think it's more important to be nice than upfront. And I'm gonna to get to why, why I'm doing this in a minute. The third one is they think it's more valuable They've heard knowledge is power. They've seen people that speak knowledgeably, right? And they want to be that person. They think knowledge is the most important thing and they don't see the application side of it. So let's start with candy coating. When you're calling people trying to buy their house, all right, or talk to them about overages, they're gonna tell you their life story. And I let them do that. You certainly need to let people vent. This is why I'm here. This is what happened. Oh my God, I've been screwed. I've had all the, and I get this too with pre-purchase questions. Sean, I gotta know everything's gonna work because I've been screwed. I bought something before and I, you know, I, I, I wanna make sure you're not gonna screw me. My stuff works and I tell the truth, okay? But I found that if I have to talk you into buying, this is candy coating we're talking about here. If I need to talk you into buying the system, hold your hand, whisper in your ear and tell you everything's gonna be okay, I find that I have to do that from the get-go. I have no problem answering questions, guys, due diligence questions. But if I have to hold your hand and tell you everything's gonna be okay and the money fairy is gonna drop a big load of money under your pillow and everything's gonna be okay and we're all gonna be millionaires and we're gonna be happy and you don't have to work, you don't have to do any of this stuff. Oh, we're just having you do title for giggles. You don't have to actually do that. What's going to happen? I'm going to set up false expectations and you're going to fail. And then you're going to be pissed at me. So what's the value of me just being nice without speaking the truth and candy coating everything? What's the value to that? Nothing. Nothing in the short term or the long term. And I'll tell you something. When you're calling people and they're about to lose a house to foreclosure, and all they can talk about is, I've been screwed, this is why I'm here, this is my ex-husband's fault, this is my boyfriend's fault, this is my mom's fault, this is, I had a bad childhood. Guys, I get that, and I respect that, and I understand that, okay? But when, when they go into that, and that's they wanna talk about why they're here, they're not ready to sell to me. They're not ready to let it go. This is about blame to them. It's not about fixing the problem. My job is to be an asshole. My job is to say, listen, Mrs. Smith, I'm sorry for what happened to you. I will certainly pray for you, and I will. I'll certainly pray for you on that. Here's the deal. We're two weeks from foreclosure. How much money you got in the bank? Uh, 1,500 bucks, okay. That's not enough to move your stuff out of the house. Where are you going to live? Well, I might live with my mom's up in Ohio. Or I might... Okay, you made a plan for that? No. You're about to get foreclosed on. You are going to lose the house. If not me, sell it to somebody else. Make some money and move on. I understand your husband screwed you. I understand your mom, your dad, your brother, your life experiences. All this stuff. I get it. I completely get it, feel for you, I'm here to buy the house. You want to sell it? You want to have some money when all this is done, or you want to be living on the street with no money? I mean, this is where we are right now, and you need to understand that. And ma'am, part of my job is to get you into reality. Well, I've gotten offers from other people, and they're more. Okay, was it a cash offer? No, they said maybe they've got a friend that can buy it 
and if I just sign this paperwork, they'll sign it, and they'll da da Ma'am, I have money. I have money behind me. A lot of money behind me. I've told you what I could do because I'm not going to come back at the final hour, right before I'm supposed to pay you, and go, you know what? I know I looked at it, but I've had second thoughts. I got to give you 10000 less. I'm not going to do that. When I take a look at this house, I buy it as is, where is, and I give you cash. And I do it fast. And if you're living in it, I might be able to le let you live there for a month or two. But let me tell you something, Mrs. Johnson. Let's say I'm going to give you sixty grand in cash. Okay, You're going to sign that deed to me. And you want to live there for two months. I got no problem with that. I'm going to give you five grand up front because that's going to be enough. Up front meaning after I record the deed, pay off the debt to stop the foreclosure. I don't want to buy a property that gets foreclosed on. Right? I'm going to give you enough to move. I'm going to give you that five grand up front. I'll give you the other 55 when you're out. I'll have somebody meet you at the house. Look at it. If it's in the same real, same real condition, you haven't left all crap all in the house. You haven't torn it up even worse than it was. You haven't done any of that and you're out of the house and I got a key guy sitting there relocking it up I'll give you a check for the rest these other guys promising you everything and they're gonna give you cash it's gonna take them a little longer but they're gonna sign it they don't have any money okay they don't have any money they went to a creative real estate investment course live uh, at the county you know the stadium or whatever center and they learned that they can lie to you and tell you that they've got, they might be able to put this deal together and they can promise you more money because they don't have experience, they haven't done it before, and they don't understand they're, gonna, they're not going to be able to flip it for the dollar that they promised you. Yes, I know, you got screwed. No, the bank did not screw you. Have you been making your payments? No, okay. You made a deal with the bank. The bank gave you $140,000 to buy this house. And here's what they said back to you, Mrs. Johnson. They said, you got to pay me $840 a month. You cool with that? And you signed a piece of paper that said you were cool with that. And you haven't paid in the last five months. Now, you lost your job. All heck, you couldn't have foreseen this stuff. I get it. Stuff happens. I'm not saying you're a schmuck. I'm saying stop blaming the bank for not making your payments. You're not making your payments. The bank's not screwing you. The bank is doing exactly what they said they were gonna do if you don't pay them. That's where we're at. I can help you and get you on to where you need to go. Guys, people are so hungry for the truth. I get people calling, even if they don't take my deal. I get, do you know how many times I get calls from people that go, Sean, I just want to let you know, when you talked to me, I thought you were such a jackass, but you know what? The other guys didn't come through and I lost the house and I got nothing. I wish I had worked with you. I just want to say thanks. Or I get this, people go, you know what? You got me to, to see it for what it was, for what was going on, what was reality, and I didn't take your offer and I... Got, took another one and you know they were about the same as you but the bottom line is before you called me I wouldn't have done anything and I appreciate it don't candy coat it guys stop candy coating stuff it's not gonna work okay the other thing is you got to tell them, look I know you know I've actually said this to people look we're two weeks out where's your money you say you're gonna come up with the money to pay off the tax uh, the taxes that are unpaid or to bring up your mortgage do you have that set now where are you gonna get it uh, well if my family is saying they might be able to get it to me or you know I'm just hoping and praying that everything's gonna work out ma'am I've said this to people and I know all of you guys watching this video are gonna go dang Sean you're an asshole it works Mrs. Johnson, because listen, 20% of the time, 20, honest to God, 20% of the time, people are thinking a miracle is going to happen. And look, guys, I believe in miracles. I'm a Christian. I get it. But here's the deal. This is what I'll say. You haven't hit the scratch off yet. It's not going to happen. 
okay? It's not going to happen. You need to come to terms with that. You're not going to walk down to the convenience store and hit the, the scratch off and pay up these taxes. Okay? People are hungry for the truth. They need to hear the truth. You're doing them a favor by telling them the truth. Guys, I'm being forceful about this because I know a lot of people that get in this business, they want to help people, and you can. But the best way for you to help people is to be honest with them and get them to understand exactly where they truly are. Okay? Now listen, interpersonal relationships and all that, that's different. Okay? Just because it's the truth doesn't mean it has to be said. Right? What does that accomplish? But if you're trying to put a deal together and you really do want to help somebody, you want them to have something that they can take and they can actually get out of the house and move on with their lives, honesty is the best policy to the point of being a complete jackass. That's what you got to do. Until you're ready to do that, you're not going to be successful. You're not. You're just not going to be successful. Okay? I take that a step further with being nice. I have fantastic people that work for me. I pay them extremely well. I have performances. Uh, I have a performance review. They have to hit their numbers. They know I'm not doing that to be a jerk. I'm doing that so that I can meet the payroll that I'm giving them. That's what I tell them. Here's what we got to hit. Use the system like I told you to use it, and it'll work. And I get this a lot. We fight with people all the time. They come on board, want to be a researcher, but they want to do it their way. They want to argue about how to do it. <laughs> we will lead you by the hand and tell you how to do the work. But we're not going to argue with you on how to do it. Um, we're not asking for that title worksheet for giggles. Okay? We're not asking you to get the last name spelled correctly for giggles. We want that because we can't skip trace them if it's not right. We're not asking for a minimum of $15,000 overage because we're just being mean. We're doing that because we're searching the judgments for you if you're if you're a researcher. And if there's a judgment on there for $3,500, we can still work the deal all the way down to ten grand. But by putting it at fifteen, you you're not wasting your time researching a file. Later we find um, you know, a $3,000 debt. If we put it at ten, three $3,000 uh, credit card judgment that you didn't see, right? Because we're checking judgments for you. We don't just go, it's only seven grand, we can't do it. No. Because we put it at 15, the stuff you're working 99% of the time, even after we put the other debt in there, is going to work. Okay? We don't shut down areas because we're being mean. We'll still work the files we got on those areas. We had a deal where we had a gentleman turn in a ton for Philadelphia and we shut them off and said, Look, uh, city of brotherly love my ass. Philadelphia, I know I'm being crass and harsh here and rude. I get that a lot. Sean, you're rude. Um, and I had it from a young lady that said, oh, it, you know, he didn't, wouldn't take stuff under 15 grand guys. I'm doing you again. I'm doing it for both of our benefits. I, you know, if you can't see that, that's cool. Um, I, I shut down Philadelphia because the people in general were so difficult to work with. Once they found out that I was also going to profit from the deal, they were like, screw it. I don't want to deal with you because you're going to profit. Well, what the heck do you, why am I calling you? Of course I'm going to profit. I'm still going to give you money too. Oh no, no. I'm not going to do a deal if it means you're going to make some money too. I mean, that's what we got in Philadelphia. So I pulled out because if we continue to take files there that weren't going to work, what was the point? Okay. Um, the last thing I want to talk about that I brought up was the whole authority thing. A lot of people are about having the knowledge and, and wanting to have the knowledge. And I'm very knowledgeable in this. You can watch the rest of my videos, guys. You'll see. Um, I've been doing this a long time. I know what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm the first one to admit that I, I gained that knowledge by getting my butt handed to me. I gained that knowledge by having failure after failure after failure and having to figure out how to do it. Uh, with the help of a lot of attorneys and surrounding myself with really smart people. But here's the mistake people make. All they want is the knowledge. I get this again and again. Hey, Sean, what if this happens? Hey, did it happen? And I'll answer the first one, guys. Somebody buys our program and they go, you know, what if somebody's in, uh, what if someone is in a South American comp country where they have not notaries but notaries and I got to get that? How do I? And I'll say, hey, look, if you get a passport, the courts will take it. Most countries, they'll take it. 
you get into Honduras, something like that, the courts are going to have some trouble accepting a notary from that, you know, from some of these countries, Venezuela, um, uh, the Philippines, all that. So you're going to need him to go to the consulate and get that done. Da, 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 da. Tom, now, my next question is always, is this an actual issue that you're facing? No. Okay. This is the last what if I'm answering. Okay. After this, only ask the question if you run across it. This is why we have support, guys. We got support built in. You run into that stuff, you can get a hold of us. We'll answer your question. But doing the what ifs, all you're doing is putting a barrier in your own way because you don't want to actually work it. Okay. You're trying to get the knowledge, everything that could possibly happen. You're creating analysis paralysis. You're creating issues that aren't there. Work it. When you run across something, we're here for you. We'll give you that. But we're not going to answer what would if questions all the time. Okay? So get out of the authority. Don't listen, guys. Don't candy coat everything. I don't. I tell people straight up, you got to work my programs. The money fairy isn't going to drop the money under your pillow. You got to work. You got to work consistently. You got to do it. You got to take direction, do it the way we tell you. Right? And you can't get sloppy. I tell people that all the time. I've had people call me and go, what's going on with my files? And I'll look them up and they've turned in two. And I'm like, we're working them. You can see it on the list. We give everybody access to our list um, to see where their files are. Well, yeah, but uh, I'm, I was expect. what were you expecting? You turned in two files. You put in a half hour worth of work. Guys, when you get good, you can do a file in, in 15 minutes. You put in a half hour worth of work and you're waiting on a check. Are you out of your damn mind? I mean, I tell people, that's pathetic. You need to turn in at least 20 files to see something start working, guys. You got to put the time in. If I tell you otherwise, if I lie to you and go, everything's going to be okay and you're going to get a check, thank you for turning in that one file, you're going to fail and hate me. Don't candy coat. Don't think that being nice is the answer. Being truthful is the answer, even if it hurts. Also, knowledge is power. Knowledge is everything. If it's applied. If you're gaining knowledge just to gain knowledge, if you want to be the guy that can, you know, well, that's not true in those particular states. Uh, it's a 20-year judgment period, and they can re-up it, but only if this, and here's the particular loophole, and how, how you talk to Screw that. I'm going to put a deal together. How about that? You keep talking over here at the cocktail party. You be the hit. You have the interesting authority, the interesting... You have the interesting uh, information... I'm going to have the interesting stories, okay? I'm going to be the guy that can talk about one of the guys getting pissed off and burning the house down. <laughs> and I still made money. I'm going to have the story about buying the mobile home, getting a call from the attorney because somebody stole it off the lot because it had wheels, okay? Why am I going to have those stories? Because I applied it, because those are things that happen. 99% of the time, your deals are white bread deals, but that 1% you get the crazy, right? But you're getting the crazy and you're getting that experience and the cool stories because you're working it and you're being successful, not because you're, you have the authority, the, uh, the information. You gotta apply it. Guys, I know I've come across like a jerk. I don't care. I don't care. Down the road, the people that listen to me and go, hmm, well, I'll listen to him, but I don't like the way he's saying it. Those people are going to go, dang, Sean, everyone on the planet is being politically correct. They're being super nice and sweet, and they're not getting jack done. You taught me how to do it. Have a good day, guys.